Hello, and welcome to lesson 62 of the Learning Guitar series. This is going to be uh, more uh, a set of instructions, in a way, than, than a specific lesson, since we're still talking about melodic minor, like we did in lesson 61. But of course, we're going to start expanding our understanding and fretboard knowledge of it. Uh, before we start, I would like to thank, as usual, the people supporting this project on Patreon. Um, your, your support is uh, invaluable and uh, much appreciated, and also the people that subscribe also to the YouTube channel. Uh, as you noticed, I have a microphone. I'm trying something new, trying to get maybe some better um, audio recording. You know. But uh, as you know, this, this particular sets of lessons, uh, they're not, you know, they're not necessarily designed for entertainment. They're, they're literally like, you know, informations. But hopefully I can get a better audio quality out of it. As usual, the lesson, this particular lesson comes with a PDF, like uh, many, many of the others. What's going to happen for the next uh, five lessons, including this one, is I'm going to give you a set of instructions on how to practice the material that I'm going to publish in the next five lessons. The, the next four, so 63, 64, 65, and 66, are not necessarily going to need a video, because as you will see in a second, basically you're looking at the five different shapes in melodic manner, and we're going to study intervals. Uh, if anything... We want to spend, uh, beside learning intervals, because I can't stress enough how important they are, we're going to spend some time, obviously, like uh, trying to play, trying to play, uh, improvise, create, uh, create melodies, actually using the material. As we know, melodic manner uh, is one note away from Dorian. So in this contest, at least for this lesson, we're going to look at uh, using Dorian in conjunction with melodic manner, eventually, like when you're practicing, also like when you're playing also using minor platonic. Let's quickly look at the PDFs so you see uh, what's going on there. So as you can see, we're looking at the melodic minor shape of E. So we're going to look looking at the first of the five shapes that uh, we're studying. And we're looking at the intervals. Uh, here is interval of seconds, interval of thirds, interval of thirds, rev stands for reversed. Um, interval of thirds, alternated A, L, A, L, T, Alt, here stands for alternated, and alternate B, so there is a variation. And I already added the double stops, so in this case it's third double stops. As you go forward, now we have fourths, same kind of thing, fourths reversed, alternated A, alternated B, double stops, all the way to octaves. And as I mentioned, in, you know, we're covering the shape of E minor in this case, so basically we're looking at this particular shape. And when we did Dorian, we know that Dorian was... For melodic minor, we know that basically we are moving the flat 7 to a major 7, and now we get this kind of sound. And of course, over a minor chord, they can be used in conjunction. You know, that's uh, that's uh, one of the beauty of it. So we can get uh, sometimes a more sophisticated sound. And again, I'm going to show you in a second how to do it. First and foremost, how do we practice this? Uh, and this, as I said, applies to the next five lessons. Um, but take each individual set of intervals. It should take you roughly like to go through properly and have a muscle memory. I think a couple of weeks. You know, probably not three weeks, but probably a couple or per shape, obviously. Let's say intervals of seconds. So you're going to perform them like this, obviously through a metronome. Once you're finished, move everything a semitone up. So and tell yourself what you're doing. Again, you're also training photographic memory. So now this was G melodic minor, shape of E. Now we're going to A flat melodic minor and do the same. Et cetera, et cetera. Up and down, you move to A, move to B flat, to B, C, et cetera. All the way up, because obviously the fret are getting smaller, so you want to get used to that too. Once you're done with that, move to thirds interval. Etc. Etc. Third reversed, you know, everything that you find on the PDF. 
But the question you might ask, why should you do that? I mean, and I, I stress this since the very beginning of this, you know, of this project. The idea is learning just to scale up and down, like we did Lexon 61, which is obviously important. Oops. Just played you Dorian for a while. Uh, that's a letter of the alphabet. It's a bit like now you learn the letter S. From there to phrasing, because there is something in between which I like to call words, because since like you know phrasing kind of resemble uh, language, so creating phrases, creating sentences. Now, you know, first we need to know uh, you know words, and the idea of studying uh, intervals in this manner, which is kind of like you know deep. Uh, and can get deeper. So this is like, you know, this is good enough. Okay, it's hard enough and good enough. And uh, then we will do triads and other materials st still within that scale. So that gives us words, you know, which then when we improvise, we can use in order to create sentences. And of course, harmony and theory represents the grammar and everybody that says harmony and theory is useless. It's just, I don't know, they're useless themselves. Um, so the idea is, in this case, we're using melodic water over a minor chord. And as I said, given that we are like one note away from Dorian, it's nice to use over, over a chord number two. And by chord number two, I'm thinking of uh, major modes. And so say in the key of C, I'm thinking of D minor. Or in the key of uh, F, I'm thinking G minor. In this case, let's use G minor. What you can do beside the backing track, which I already uploaded to Patreon, and there is like a video version on, on, on the YouTube channel, which is already kind of more sophisticated. What you want to do at first is literally kind of loop a chord. In this case, we can loop G minor. Either with a drone, with a rhythm, it doesn't matter. Even just a note. I'll show you what I mean. So in this case, I'm literally just looping a, a G in the bass. And in fact, if I play you, you know. You hear the sound, so somehow you're kind of training your ears at the same time. And of course, if you do it with the intervals. Is this musical as it is? No, as it is, it's an exercise. But if I start doing... These are seconds intervals. Before it sounded like an exercise. Which is, you know, it's not necessarily musical. Don't forget the objective of... Uh, of you know improvisation but like even if you're writing your solos it's the right melodies it's not about you know don't focus too much on speed that will come it's off the muscle memory in a way create melodies this is like for example like it's a fifth type of interval right? And I told you, like, also, like, you can combine this with Dorian, and the note that the only different note basically is the major seven goes back to a flat seven, and then you have Dorian. And of course, within Dorian, there is the pentatonic. In fact, like, if I play you this. Tonic phrasing or Dorian. That's the flat seven. That's the major seven. And same thing happens here. Major seven. Flat seven. So if I start kind of sounding wanting to sound Dorian, I'm gonna hit the flat seven, right? They are like some pentatonic, you know, the blues kind of with a flat five. Flat foot, the typical, of, you know, the blues. But can I move chromatically? Go octave, octave, major seven. So I'm, for a second, I'm in a melodic minor territory, and now I'm in uh, 
Dublin Territory. forget you can also practice melodically the arpeggio because we also did that in lesson 61 and the arpeggios were uh, it's a minor major seven arpeggio and we looked at okay the major seven I can play it here I can play it here whatever you find more comfortable and again it goes in conjunction with a simple minor seven arpeggio here is your flat seven major seven So, of course, these are all things that, you know, first you studied the intervals, as I suggested, and whatever we did, first of all, in Lesson 61. So, the basic scale in the arpeggio. Um, let me stop this. And, as I said, every two weeks, I'm going to add the next shape, and then the next shape, and then the next shape. That's the entire idea. So, within, like, four or five lessons, we'll have done all the intervallic studies for melodic minor and that is a massive kind of concept before we delve and after that we'll start delving also into some of the harmony and theory because right now we're applying melodic minor to a minor chord at some point we'll, you'll see how we can apply it easily to dominant seven chords and get some very interesting effects two words about the backing track the backing track uses a, a two five uh, kind of progression um, um, the two chord is minor, the five chord is dominant seven. In the case of the backing track, it starts with G minor, two bars, C7, two bars. And then it repeats four times, which means you have basically like 16 bars of this two five progression. And this two five progression is basically you're playing because G melodic minor over it or G Dorian or G pentatonic. As I mentioned before, you know, if you looked at it from the point of view of the five chord, so if you thought of those scales in the terms of C7 as opposed to G minor, now sadly, even without changing anything, you know, you're still playing the same scale. You, you could call it, okay, now I'm playing a G mixolydian or G lydian dominant, you know, another mode of melodic minor. But as I mentioned before, the harmony dictates the mode you're playing, it's not really you. Since we're studying melodic minor, let's look at it from the minor point of view. I mean, I tend to do that because I come from the blues, so I tend to, you know, I tend to see things in minor because of the pentatonic and stuff. Nonetheless, and the, 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 the backing track goes from G minor, 16 bars, basically that's the key on end. And then it moves to B minor, so literally I want you to take whatever, the shape that you're studying, which is the shape of B minor, Move it up to B minor, okay? So if you, the first 16 bar, you're improvising and you're like. After 16 bar, take the entire shape, move it up. And now you're in B. After 16 bars, it's going to move to E flat minor, so up here. And after 16 bars, it's going to go back to B. And after 16 bars, it kind of repeats itself, so it goes back to G. In other words, when you, as you're studying the shape of E minor, and I want you to say that I want you to practice melodically, so you know, use the backing track to literally play once you feel comfortable with the motions. You're basically going from G minor, then same shape B minor, then same shape E flat minor, then same shape B minor. Your end is going, we're playing in position, let's put it that way. Um, at some point, once we start studying the second shape, you'll see that now things are going to start to overlap. And by the end of the next five lessons, you'll be able to play all the three different keys in any position of the neck, you know. But one thing at a time, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And when I say playing in position, also like try, say in the case of this scale, uh, the scale is kind of covering, uh, within the cage system, obviously, uh, five frets. So... So you have five frets, and you can look, look at it from this point of view, and you're sliding this way. Mm -hmm. 
But bottom line, you're trying as much as possible to have one finger, one fret kind of rule. As in maybe, you know, of course, you can always use slides and um, bends and vibrato as uh, expression techniques. Nothing wrong with that. But, you know, if you find yourself using a, like one or two fingers only. Again, try and see if you can kind of respect, okay, these two frets are taken care of either by slides or by these two fingers, these two fingers. Right? So, in a way, if you can, you cover, each finger is covering basically a note. So that, you know, you can also try like mini barre kind of thing. For example, here you have six notes, one under the other, not that, you know, not necessarily has to be uh, a musical idea, but so you're aware of it. I mean, like, that can be an idea. <laughs> String skipping kind of stuff. As I said, the exercise themselves don't need, it's just, as I said, I'm giving you instructions. I'm not, you know, uh, just practice this stuff. You know, that's the idea. And, uh, but let's say you, you can play two hours a day. Spend one hour on this, one hour so on the PDF, and see how far you can go. And then the day after, you, can, you take it from there, kind of like. So you try and cover the PDF, and then you cover it again, and then you cover it again. As I said, a couple of weeks might be enough to start getting some muscle memory going. Of course, don't do it fast. Practice at a reasonable speed where you're not making too many mistakes. That's the idea. It takes a little bit of the first days just to sink in because it's all very new probably. And then spend the other hour just playing, literally playing. Try and use what you're learning, but, you know, play. Create melodies. Don't worry about speed. Say, just create melodies. I hope this makes sense. I'm going to add, uh, I'm going to, had like a little add-on after this. I'm just going to put on the backing track and play. I'm going to play the way I tend to practice improvisation. So that it's, you know, uh, surely it's not the best of guitar solos in terms of trying to create a story. But, you know, as I say, that's how I practice things. You know, in this case, probably, you know, I'm using more likely, I'm going to be using more likely the entire neck. Uh, but I'll try and, as much as possible to stick to melodic pattern, Dorian, and, and pentatonics eventually, and move across those three keys, uh, the three keys of the beginning track. This is just to give you an idea of what I mean by like, you know, just trying to practice musicality, but you know, trying to use the language. You, you're practicing improvisation in this case. I'm sure that in time, interesting idea will come up and there are your ideas. That's, uh, again, to me, that's the important part. You express yourself. Um, and that's why I'm not really teaching you licks. Um, I think that's it. I think, as usual, I probably talked too much. I, was, I thought that this was going to be short. Um, it's very hot here in London, so you'll forgive if I'm actually sweating. It's been very hot for the, for the entire last week, and which made doing this and writing the PDFs quite hard. Uh, again, thank you for your support. And um, if you have any questions, as usual, you know, write to me on Patreon or leave a comment on, uh, on the YouTube channel. Uh, and, well, enjoy playing. Thank you. Bye.